the University of Western Australia recently celebrated its centenary year and the university is repeatedly rated amongst the world's top 100 universities. The medical school here is one of the university's flagship professional degrees. We recently transitioned to a Bologna reformed MD program which is now the world standard for um, higher education. Our university and our school is designated as a World Health Organisation collaborating centre for research and training in mental health, one of only a handful of places that has that designation. Our staff perform at an international level in a variety of research endeavours including uh, the, the genetic epidemiology of schizophrenia, uh, old age psychiatry and neuroscience. We actively encourage our staff to present at the major international meetings in a variety of local and international fora. We have an implant uh, which is uh, administered subcutaneously and delivers naltrexone uh, into the blood system over several months and that, so that makes it several times longer than any other uh, product produced globally. We also have uh, ways of administering uh, flumazenil which has a very short half-life uh, by infusion pumps uh, either subcutaneously or, or intravenously and we also have a polymer in an implant that will deliver that flumazenil. The way they've approached this in, in Western Australia is to make depots, to make uh, implants with the antagonist in that they put under the skin and then they slowly, uh, the antagonist slowly leaks out and gives us kind of consistent level of blockade that protects against the abuse of the drug but doesn't itself cause problems. And this is a very clever approach and, uh, and what I'm working with them on now is trying to work out the appropriate dosing, particularly of the benzodiazepine antagonist, and try to use the techniques we have here of looking, uh, looking at brain imaging to measure what proportion of the receptors in the brain are blocked and how then the, what the relationship is between the degree of blockade and the therapeutic benefit. And this is actually you know, very cutting edge research, no one else in the world is doing that. The people that would most benefit from this treatment uh, of naltrexone implant are the heroin users, uh, alcohol problem users and problem amphetamine users. In relation to, to uh, flumazenil, it's really people who have benzodependencies, who have iatrogenic problems following ceasing benzodiazepine use, and more recently we've been looking at uh, idiopathic hypersomnia, and uh, then even more recently at people with mopping up some of the symptoms to do with Parkinson's. The school here is, uh, is very diligent, they're very caring, uh, they, they tried to work with me. It wasn't like I was a test subject, they were working with me and um, I was happy to help out uh, in the way of answering questionnaires and this sort of thing, no problem, but primarily they were focused on me and it worked. We have two main streams of studies. One is the epidemiological stream and the other one is randomized clinical trials. The epidemiological stream attempts to identify factors that are potentially modifiable that we can use for interventions to see if by doing that we can change the outcome of participants at risk of the disease or who have a certain disease such as depression. For example, uh, we, we and others have shown that uh, physical inactivity increases the risk of cognitive decline and dementia as people get older. Uh, with that in, in mind, we designed a randomized trial to see if by using a program of physical activity we could decrease the rate of cognitive decline in people at risk of dementia, uh, a group of people called people with mild cognitive impairments. And we ran this trial for 18 months and uh, we showed for the first time that uh, getting older people who have mild cognitive impairments to engage in physical activity decreases the rate of cognitive decline over time and this has very practical implications for the way we, we manage these people at risk in the population. I was interested in psychiatry as a discipline and I knew that but the School of Psychiatry gave me every 
opportunity and all the support I needed to transform that interest into a passion and an ambition. There was never any doubt in my mind that I wanted to study medicine at the University of Western Australia. It's a medical school that's produced a Nobel laureate in Barry Marshall. It has an international reputation for excellence and it is situated on the most beautiful university campus in Australia. My relationship with the School of Psychiatry and Clinical Neurosciences uh, has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, they have really inspired and motivated me to pursue a career in psychiatry. I think what sets the school apart from other schools uh, in our faculty is their outstanding culture of student engagement and mentorship. The Classing Institute was very important to its, my experience here because it gave me a breadth of exposure of varying topics in psychiatry. Furthermore, it enhanced my interest in pursuing psychiatry as a career, as evident by the fact that I was one of the graduates of the Classing Institute during its inception. Now I'm a committee member of the organising committee and I'll continue to participate in it. Study opportunities are something that I've already undertaken and I'll personally be starting a research program in the United Kingdom later on this year, Oxford, but equally training in, uh, in internationally and having international doctors coming to Australia as well is absolutely invaluable.